Hello everyone. In class we did not finish problem 29 from chapter 3 so I put together this little video to uh, go through that problem with you. And just as a reminder what the problem is, uh, they give you the financial statements of Michael Company and Aaron Company as of December 31st 2015. Michael acquired all the outstanding voting stock on January 1st, 2011. Be careful of the uh, dates. So that notice that this is January 1st, 2011. By issuing 20,000 shares of its own $1 par value common stock, the acquisition date Michael's stock is actually trading at 2350. So that is the fair value of the 20,000 shares. So what they gave was the 20,000 times the uh, 2350. That is your fair value of consideration transferred. On the acquisition date, Aaron reported retained earnings of 230,000. That's going to be important. We're going to need that later on for our star C entry. And then the total book value was 360. Now this is at the date of acquisition. So that's a very important. We needed the book value at the date of acquisition. At that time, its royalty agreements were undervalued by 60,000. So that's going to be one of our um, allocations. This intangible asset was assumed to have a six year remaining life, no residual value. And they also owned a trademark with the fair value of 50,000, 10 year remaining life that was not reflected on the books. So it means it's understated. They declared and paid dividends in the same period. So step 1A is to prepare the acquisition date, fair value allocation, and our annual amortization. So what we do is take the fair value of the consideration transferred, that is the fair value of that stock, minus the book value of subsidiary assets. In this case, that was given at uh, 360. That, that number was given in the problem. And then what we're trying to do is allocate that excess of the cost over the book value. And that excess will be allocated to any under overvalued assets and liabilities. And then if there's anything left over, it goes to goodwill. So they told us that the royalty agreements were understated by 60,000 and that the trademarks were understated by 50,000. That gives you a total understatement of 110,000. Well, that's exactly equal to the excess there. So therefore we have goodwill of zero. If that was a positive number, then we would record goodwill. If it was a negative number, then remember we would have a gain on bargain purchase. So then we take the two undervalued uh, items and we allocate them over their useful life to get your amortization over here of 10,000 and 5,000 for a total amortization of $15,000. Step 1B is to determine which internal accounting method the parent company is using. Well, to do this, you look at the investment revenue account on the parent's books, and you'll notice that it's $5,000. That is exactly equal to the parent's share of the dividends declared on the subsidiary's books. So if you go under the subsidiary's books, look on their retained earnings statement, and you see that they paid dividends of $5,000. Since those are the same, that must mean they're using the initial value method because the initial value method only reports investment revenue as the dividends received. That's it. Step two is, two is prepare the consolidation entries. So the first one is entry S and we're going to eliminate uh, the stockholders equity accounts in there against the investment. So you have basically you debit all the stockholders equity accounts at the beginning of the year. So notice that we're using the beginning retained earnings, not the ending, the beginning retained earnings. And we end up with a beginning retained earnings of 490 and then just sum those, sum these debits together and that's going to give you your credit there. So the credit is just a force figure to your investment account. Then we come to entry A, which is to recognize the allocations that we did that excess of cost over book value. Now notice these figures are not going to be equal to the original figures. The royalty agreement here, that well that was originally 
um, that was originally $60,000. How did we get to the 20,000? Well, we have, remember that we're in 2015. So these are all gonna be the beginning of your balances. So how many years have we amortized so far? I'm talking about at the beginning of 2015. So we've amortized 2011, 12, 13, and 14. That is four years of amortization. So four years of amortization, and each year we amortized um, $10,000. So four, so four years times 10,000 amortization per year, that's 40,000. Remember the initial balance was 60,000. So 60 minus 40 is 20. So that's what's left. That's what's left. The trademark started at 50,000. And again, we amortized four years at 5,000 per year. I'm writing with the mouse, so that's why it doesn't look very good. Is $20,000. And, uh, and it started at 50,000. So 50,000, the initial trademark, minus the 20,000 amortization for four years, gives you 30,000. And there never was any goodwill, so that's why it's zero. And, but I'm just showing that as a placeholder so you don't forget it in the future. And then we just add those two figures together to get the force figure of 50,000. Then entry I, because it's the initial value method, it changes because it's related to our income. Remember, I is for the income. So we're eliminating the income that we recorded of, from the subsidiary, which this case is just dividend income, but that's our investment revenue. And then it goes against the dividends paid. Because we made the dividends up in entry I, we don't need a, um, an entry D for dividends because we use the initial value method. Then entry E is to record our amortization. And if you go back to our original allocation, we amortize 10,000 for the royalty agreements and 5,000 for trademarks. Both of those are intangible assets, so they both go to amortization as opposed to, say, depreciation. And then entry P, there were no intercompany. Uh, receivables payables but I wanted to put it on there again as a placeholder just so you don't forget it that gets us to entry star C because we're not using the equity method we're gonna have to add this extra uh, this extra entry to for our consolidations because we need to in essence catch it up to the equity method so we're going to make the entry debit the investment and credit beginning retained earnings. Now, how do I come up with that? Well, we know we need this entry because they're using the initial value method and we need, need to adjust to or as if it's kind of a retroactive adjustment as if they were using the equity method all along. Remember, the initial value that does not account for the net income, dividends and amortization of uh, the subs from the subsidiary. So to account for that, we're going to have to record the cumulative net income, take out the cumulative dividends, and the cumulative amortization from 1 1 2011 when we bought it to 1 1. Notice it's always to the beginning here. To the beginning. Why to the beginning? Because this year we record the amortization and entry E, so we don't need to double count that. Well, if you just look at these two figures, cumulative net income minus cumulative dividends, what is that? Well, that represents the change in retained earnings. Retained earnings go, goes up by net income and down by dividends. So really, we can capture that by looking at the change in the retained earnings of the Aaron company, the subsidiary, and then subtract out the cumulative amortization for 2011, 12, 13, 14, four years of cumulative amortization. So the retained earnings, beginning retained earnings, look on the balance sheet, uh, I'm sorry, look on the retained earnings statement. The beginning retained earnings of Aaron was 490,000. 
subtract out. Now they gave it to you in the problem, so that would have to be given the beginning retained earnings. So there was a $260,000 increase. That means more income than dividends, but we also need to then subtract out the cumulative amortization, which would be $15,000. That's our total amortization for four years. That's $60,000. So 260 minus 60 is $200,000 increase in the investment. Our last step is to prepare the consolidated worksheet. Once you have the consolidated entries from step two, this is a fairly straightforward process, although there are a couple places that can mess you up, and I'll point those out. So all I did here was take the um, consolidated entries and post them into our debit and credit columns here. So the first two columns, that's the parent company first, then the subsidiary, and we're just going to list them all of their book values. And then we're going to um, take uh, put in our debits and credits from our adjusting or sorry our consolidated entries and then come up with our consolidated totals. Just be careful, remember at the direction. So for example, expenses are increased with the debit. So those those uh, the first the first item here is uh, increased with this E here. It is increased, it increases, but the second one, let me use a different color here, the second one is a revenue account and a debit decreases a revenue account. So just be careful how it is, uh, how it's recorded here. And by the way, these negatives just represent credit balances. So like for example, uh, it looks funny, negative revenue, but the revenue is a credit. So I just showed it as as um, a credit balance instead of parentheses, just a different way to do it. All right, so just add and subtract all these different numbers in here. And then you come up with your consolidated totals over in the far column. A couple of things to watch for. The net income that you get on the income statement goes down to your retained earnings statement. Just, you know, kind of principles of accounting, if you remember that, net income increases your retained earnings. And then your ending retained earnings goes down to your balance sheet. Those are the only ones that don't kind of add across, if you will. And so they look a little bit funny, but that's where you get those numbers. And then a final check is to make sure your total debits and credits balance out to each other. Hopefully this helps you understand the process. Try it by yourself without looking at this video and then see if you can see if you can do it all the way through. I'll see you in class.